So I think we can say that the revolution is over, certainly the first phase of it, and the center of Kiev has been turned into a sort of makeshift shrine today with tens of thousands of people who would normally be staying at home or going to work or might have been demonstrating in the square coming on a pilgrimage on this road here. Now this is the road that leads from the square up to Parliament behind me and this was where the key battle of the revolution took place on Thursday. Look there, there's a patrol of guards still armed with their baseball bats, sticks and shields heading up the hill. I think really to make the point that even though the revolution might be over, they are still here to keep an eye on its legacy. They were positioned in that building over there, that's the, the cultural centre, um, and in the buildings behind it. And th it's from those positions that some of the riot police, or someone, was using live ammunition to target the demonstrators on the street below. And wherever you see a cluster of flowers, and especially a picture, that's where one of these people fell. Remember, there were more than 50 who were killed that morning. Altogether, the number of casualties is about 100, which is why this road has been renamed the Road of the Celestial Hundred. If Yanukovych, assuming for a minute that it was him, had not given that order to kill those people, this would not have happened. I mean, this revolution would not be over. They'd still be demonstrating in the square as they were for the last three months. And taking it back even further, now, President Yanukovych had signed the association agreement with the EU, which is what this is all about after all. He would still be in power. He would not be a hunted fugitive from justice. He would still be living in a swanky compound on the outskirts of town. And there would not have been a demonstration in this square. There would not have been a Maidan too. But because he decided to be seduced financially by Russia and turn his back on Europe and therefore on the majority of his people in this country, and then make one crucial mistake after another, using too much force, but not enough force, to quash the demonstrations forever, he ended up having to pay the price. Not the ultimate price, but the price of losing power. The question is, what do they do with all this revolutionary zeal and this legacy now? There's a jockeying for power going on in the parliament building not far from here. We saw that yesterday. Endless meetings in smoke-filled rooms. The key characters of this Game of Thrones deciding who should run the country. But they know that they have to pass it past the people, the square. There'll be an election. And as someone told me yesterday on the barricades, the big difference is that we are now no longer, we the people, are now no longer afraid of them, the politicians. That's what's changed.